سال آخر دبیرستان بودم it was during our final exams they arrested us incidentally there was a friend with me in the car they arrested both of us and took us to the uh, Evin prison as soon as they recognized us four of them got out of the car and started kicking and hitting us with a stick and they beat us up Looking from the back, I could see how my father was looking at my brother, knowing this was their last farewell meeting. The Baha'is are persecuted in Iran, and this is a deeply rooted issue. The Baha'i community has had the highest number of prisoners in the last 20 years. The Baha'i community in Iran is the obvious case of a minority, of a persecuted minority. The government of Iran has tried to incite violence and hatred against the Baha'is through various media propaganda, including in films and in the articles that are published in the newspapers. Children are exposed to negative comments, who they are, who their families are, indoctrination, uh, discrimination then of a, of a person in the labor market when trying to organize an independent life, discrimination also regarding marriage, family laws, uh, and it goes on through the entire life and doesn't even stop with death if you also include desecration of cemeteries in the overall picture, the horrible picture. In 1981, my parents received an order from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Agriculture saying, the aforementioned person is the director of education in the city of Zabul and an active member of the deviated Baha'i sect with the above-mentioned Zionist certificate from Sangasar. Moreover, her spouse, Ali Rahmanian, is dismissed from the Ministry of Agriculture for belonging to this deviated cult, with which the aforementioned person is also affiliated. After a few years, my father was able to start a flower shop after some painstaking efforts. In 1988, a group of people from Semnan Business Department came to our shop and said, there is an issue with your permit, and they closed down our shop for a while. While we were trying to obtain a new permit, a group of people raided into the shop carrying incendiary material with the intent to destroy the shop. We reported this to the police and filed a complaint, but they ultimately did not cooperate with us in any way. We received a letter from the Justice Bureau saying that as a florist, one's hands get wet while decorating flowers. And given that Baha'is are considered unclean by the high-ranking clerks, the work permit was revoked and they didn't issue a new work permit. One could say this is quite widespread. All Baha'is living in various cities in Iran are subject to persecution. Their houses are attacked, their cemeteries are destroyed, some of their houses are set on fire, their shops are closed down, in universities students are expelled if they are identified as Baha'is. This shows there is a systematic plan against the Baha'is. The violence and hatred that have been incited against the Baha'is the past few years have been engineered by official and semi-official government authorities, the Muslim clergy, and also supported at the highest levels of the Iranian government. When I 
When we got close to our house, we saw a pride car, and once they recognized us, four people got out of the car and started kicking and hitting us with a stick and beat us up, saying, with what permit did you enter this neighborhood? We said, you don't need a permit to visit your home or homeland. I went forward to at least take a look at the condition of our house. When I entered the yard, I saw people tearing down the place and destroying it. I said, with what permit are you destroying this place? This is my house, and so forth. Then I saw all of them coming down from the roof, and they started beating us. We went to Kiosar's court and informed the sheriff's office and the governor's office, but to this day we have not reached any results. They destroyed and burned 50 houses with everything in them. The policy of the Islamic Republic has been to increase the pressure on the Baha'i community so that in the best case scenario, they would relinquish their beliefs. By making false accusations and writing against the Baha'is in the governmental websites and newspapers, they try to incite the public opinion and create hatred against the Baha'is. Even though the government of Iran has tried to incite violence and hatred against the Baha'is through various media propaganda, including in films or in articles in newspapers, but the people of Iran have not been influenced by these. And day by day, we see an increasing number of Iranians rising up in support of the Baha'is. Even if on certain occasions, particularly in smaller places and villages and small cities, the people actually took part in these incidents, they were either influenced by governmental propaganda, or even if they did so of their own volition due to religious prejudices, or say property disputes, the government nonetheless failed to support the Baha'is, and the Islamic Republic is in any way responsible. They would say things like, these Baha'is are dirty, they are unethical, they are unclean, non-believers or coffers, do not dine with them, do not socialize with them, do not befriend them. As a child in the elementary school, hearing the teacher saying these sort of things in the classroom to your classmates is truly tragic. In the math class, one of the teachers knew I was a Baha'i. And from the moment she entered the class, instead of teaching us algebra and trigonometry, she would only badmouth Baha'is and insult them. She would say some really obscene things, which I had a hard time listening to, let alone responding. But I also knew that she just wanted to instigate me. In the car I was driving, there were some educational pamphlets for Baha'i kids. And this is considered a crime uh, from the perspective of the government of Iran. I was in the last year of high school at the time. It was during our final exams. They arrested me. Incidentally, there was a friend with me in the car. They arrested both of us and took us to the Evin prison. Uh, they kept us there blindfolded for about 10 days in solitary confinement. There was only enough room to be able to lie down. I was taken to different detention places twice again because of my artistic and music, musical activities. And they would say things like, you are a Baha'i and you want to corrupt the ethics of the Iranian youth. Uh, your music is Western music and it corrupts the society and the people. My father was active in the higher education of the youth in Iran. That was my father's crime. My sister was active in human rights in Iran and cooperated with uh, Shirin Abadi's office. Uh, 
She carried out some simple activities regarding women's rights in Iran. She was also arrested twice and put in prison. They arrested my brother-in-law and accused him of involvement in the Green Movement. The poor guy didn't even leave the house, but they accused him of being a Baha'i and a, an opponent of the regime. They also accused the Baha'is of having ties with Israel and Zionism because their holy sites are in modern-day Israel. But the state of Israel did not even exist at the time when this center was established there. The only reason they cite for espionage on the part of the Baha'is is that the shrines of the great figures of the Baha'i faith are located in Israel, which are considered sites of pilgrimage for the Baha'is. As a Muslim, when I go to Saudi Arabia for pilgrimage, does the mere fact that the House of God, the Kaaba, is located in Saudi Arabia mean all Muslims in the world could be spying for Saudi Arabia in their native countries? This argument has no legal or rational foundation. The last day we went to see my father, uh, we knew his court had taken place. He said his court consisted of an interrogator, a cassette tape, and a tape recorder. If the interrogator was nodding off, he'd wake up and say, keep talking, it's being recorded. My father told us about this. He said that he was told in the court that the verdict would be in compliance to Islam. We were under the impression that if it's in compliance to Islam, it would be fair and impartial, and they will know that he didn't do anything and he would be released. Usually when accompanied by my brother, I would always let him go first to see my father. Looking from the back, this time I saw how my father was looking at my brother. I knew this was the farewell meeting. And that's what happened. We were informed on July 29th that he was executed along with eight other Baha'is from Tabriz. The execution came after 24 hours of solitary prison, before which he was told either Islam or execution. My father signed his will that he had drafted the few days prior to his execution, and it was read in the last hours of his life. We received my father's body the following day, and this was after they asked us to reimburse them for the bullets. This was very difficult. We not only had to receive the body, but also reimburse them for the very same bullet which had taken the life of our loved one. According to the current laws in Iran, every person must be accountable for his own conduct. Every person must be accountable for the harm he inflicts. Be accountable for any destruction he causes. Be accountable for his illegal behavior in Iran. But in practice, none of the complaints against government officials would ever get anywhere unless they are brought forth by individuals inside the government with superior power over the other governmental official against whom the complaint was filed. Mr. Ahmad Shahid, the Special Rapporteur for the Human Rights Situation in Iran, who presented his report to the Human Rights Council, pointed out to this issue, saying that there's a culture of impunity in Iran, which further weakens 
the impact of the human rights instruments which Iran has ratified. The international community shows sensitivity to any violation of human rights in any society, any law, and in any country, including Iran. It's our responsibility to respond and uh, uh, respond in solidarity of target groups. And that is, uh, it's something that especially also the human rights community has to do. The Baha'i International Community's reports violence with impunity, documents hundreds of incidents of torture, physical assault, the abuse of school children, desecration of cemeteries, and other types of violence that have been perpetrated against the Baha'i community of Iran since 2005, all of which have been carried out with complete impunity. These hardships, difficulties, and lawlessness extend not only to the Baha'is, but also to many other religious minorities, many human rights activists, many journalists, many attorneys, and many liberation associations in Iran, which are currently undergoing similar oppression. It is tragic, but we are hopeful that one day things will change. We hope that the government of Iran would listen to its conscience and provide freedom to the Iranian citizens of all races and religions, people affiliated with any ideology, art, or industry. They are all human beings, and you should not necessarily agree with one another. Even if you do not believe in the Baha'i faith, how could you take away a citizen's human rights and not consider that person a human being? We must have a society in which the people could present their ideas and have the right to pursue their ideology while their rights as a human is observed. The Baha'is must be allowed to fulfill their much cherished desire to serve Iran and to contribute to its construction shoulder to shoulder with their fellow citizens.